Hey folks, today I'm working on a pair of KEF 104-2s and I'm going to be doing the routine servicing that uh, you've probably seen in other videos and I've seen in other videos as well. So I'm using tips from a couple of different sources of YouTube videos and I'm kind of feeling my own way around it as I, uh, as I approach. Uh, one thing uh, that I wanted to talk to you about and you may find this very important, you may not, I don't know. But, one video I saw, the fellow uh, destroyed the bottom panel in taking it off because it's siliconed, uh, sealed around there. And this is just a um, uh, particle board, right? Veneer particle board, that's just particle board. So it tore up and he had to cut a new bottom panel. He had to fashion a whole new bottom panel. Uh, his was the type that did not have the crossover mounted to the underside. I've seen another video where the fellow removed the screws and the thing just popped right off. There's no silicone, no sealant, nothing holding it on other than the screws. And it had the crossover mounted to the bottom plate. So I'm not sure what I'm going to find here. Uh, being as it's, I'm finding it silicone. I'm probably going to find that the uh, crossover actually lives inside um, somewhere in the middle there that I can't see from here. But we'll find out here shortly. But the one thing I wanted to show you that I found interesting, I was trying to figure out how to get this, this sucker off of there. And uh, I gently pried at it with the screwdriver and it was just stuck solid. It wouldn't budge. And I feared um, doing damage to the upper part right if, if I pried too much it might tear that up so I really didn't want to do that um, what I have is I found a similar thread screw um, I won't go into detail but it's just something I've had laying around uh, part of another repair kit for something altogether different now after removing the uh, feet right the same size uh, thread screw so I removed the feet I put these in wrench them down with the Allen wrench what it's doing is it's pressing against the uh, the joint inside the cabinet so this is putting tension against the wood and at the same time extracting the bottom so you can see I've all but got it removed now and so far no damage. So I'm very excited about this. So I have the Allen wrench and the screw is in. It's stuck here pretty well. This is loose. These bottom corners definitely are loose. I'm going to try and finish out this corner without doing any more damage than I have to. And it should pop here in a second. It's sticking. I can see through the crevice here that it's tearing up a little bit. This corner's loose. So what I'm doing is the screw is pushing in against the bottom interior of the cabinet. Breaking that silicone. Come on, come on. There we go. So I did lose a little tiny corner there, but you know what? I call that a success, and uh, I'm going to reattach that corner and let it go at that. All right, so now time to remove the uh, insulation, and we have the polyfill doubled over in the bottom. There is a square of foam lining the interior. I hope you can uh, forgive my crappy production here. I just decided to do this on the fly, so matter of fact, I mean uh, the videoing. Um, since I came across that idea with the uh, bottom removal. 
it kind of struck me. Maybe I ought to make a little video. And uh, what I'm using is a, uh, this is actually a T-handle wrench that uh, I use to uh, adjust truss rods on guitars. Pliers. I spy a crossover. All right. My customer has supplied me with replacement grommets. Grommets definitely need replacing. They're they're torn. Two out of the three, and the third one just ripped as soon as I tugged on it a little. And yeah, we'll be replacing that little donut hole. Look here, down inside, stuck to the magnet, is a little tiny star washer, lock washer. Where it came from, I don't know. Maybe we'll get lucky and find out. Obviously, I've already removed the uh, front panel with the mid-range and the tweeter. It's shown here. And uh, later, I will be removing the tweeter and replacing fair fluid. Looks like somebody's already been in here once before. Um, yeah, there's some um, electrical tape on the two wires going to the tweeter. I wonder what that's all about. I bet he cut wires and then reattached them. Meanwhile, what I've got to do is remove six screws. Two, four, six. There's another woofer, like the one I just removed, behind here. And that will also give me access to the crossover so that I can get it out and recap this puppy. Now, and there's that. More washers stuck to the magnet. Probably came off the post as I pulled the speaker out. And there we have it. Monster uh, crossover. That was a, I already scratched up my arm getting it out. That was a little more difficult than I cared for. What I discovered was with just a little tug, uh, very little effort, the uh, beetle surround came loose from the frame and apparently there was a paper gasket or something um, and it just, half of it came off with the surround, half stayed on the cone, uh, or frame rather, so I'm attempting to I put some shims in, squared up, and attempting to re-glue it. Nothing to lose, right? Because uh, it's not usable in the uh, in the other condition. sometimes you get lucky you know I think we dodged a bullet on this one I'm gonna give the other one a shot cuz it's doing the same thing so I'm replacing um, I think what they call the donut uh, foams uh, on the two woofers in the first cabinet I've yet to move to the second one but um, okay in the uh, case of the tweeter in this cabinet. I'm assuming the other cabinet is identical. It uh, certainly appears somebody has worked on them before um, probably doing the same job I'm prepping to do and that is replace the fair fluid. Um, and it's a giveaway that the uh, wires have been cut and then apparently re-soldered and uh, covered in electrical tape and I'm about to gingerly remove 
the electrical tape in hopes that I don't damage the connection here. Heating up that solder so the wire just pulls away, right? So now I can turn the diaphragm around, work on it from any angle I like, unencumbered. One thing I'd like to point out, um, replaced 16 capacitors on the uh, crossover board and some of them had to be doubled up because the original values were no longer um, available. What I didn't document was um, repair to the tweeter. That went perfect. Uh, removed the old ferrofluid, cleaned the uh, voice coil with a Q-tip and some um, alcohol, installed new ferrofluid, put it all back together. Seamless. Um, I'm going to put everything back in the cabinet now. And I won't bore you with uh, documenting all of that, but um, wish me luck and hopefully I'll see, see you on the other side with a, a fully functioning cabinet and then I'll go on to cabinet A. Right? Thanks. Alright, so testing the, uh, the top components. Perfect. Tweeter singing again. All right, bolt it down. Screw the adjustable feet back in, and uh, call it a day for this one. On to the. Okay, so I just finished um, doing a side by side A B test between B and A. Uh, B being the one, B being the one, B B B that I just worked on, and um, you know I played some music, um, some A B C actually. One of these uh, old 80s uh, British bands. I like that stuff. You get a lot of clarity with the... Uh, he does some stuff on the cymbals and hi-hat and stuff. And it's just... Um, there's a lot of musical depth to their music, believe it or not. It sounded fine on A, which I haven't worked on yet. I then went to B and played the same tune. And it was... Oh my God. Um, substantial difference in clarity all the way around. Um, especially I, I noticed a difference in the tweeter. Uh, the change in fair fluid went a long ways in um, helping it move and uh, produce sound. Yeah. So um, I can't say to what effect uh, changing over the caps in the crossover had because uh, actually I hadn't measured the old caps and I don't plan to just uh, kind of pointless because I did the work time to move on but um, also time to move on to cabinet A and hopefully I won't have the same issues that I had with cabinet B's woofers you remember the surround and I had to receipt uh, realign the voice coils in them um, I'm happy to say that they are trouble free and sound great um, so as I said sometimes I get lucky and in this case I'm very pleased with the result thanks a lot for watching and uh, have a good day.